exercise Talisman Sabre is a biennial, multinational military exercise led by Australia and the United States. Talisman Sabre involves joint exercises performed by the Australian Defence Force and the United States military across six locations in northern and central Australia, the Coral Sea, and in Honolulu, Denver, and Suffolk, Virginia, though the bulk of the exercises is concentrated at the Shoalwater Bay Military Training Area and other locations in northern and central Australia, and Australia's Territorial Sea and Exclusive Economic Zone. There was opposition to Talisman Sabre 2007 from peace activists and a number of environmental groups, with environmental concerns ranging from general contamination to the purported damaging effects of sonar on local marine life. The Australian and American militaries have previously recognized the environmental concerns of operating in this area, with troops undergoing environmental impact briefings before arriving at the location in 2005, and an environmental training center to be constructed before the 2007 exercise. There have been concerns that depleted uranium munitions, which have been linked to increased incidence of cancer, posing significant health risks, have been used at the Shoalwater Bay Military Training Area during Exercise Talisman Sabre. Prior to the 2005 exercise, the Australian Department of Defence issued a press release which stated that depleted uranium will not be used in TS-05 by either Australian or US forces, and that this was unequivocal. This commitment was reiterated prior to Talisman Sabre 2009. In 2013, the US Navy dropped at least two bombs into the sea, after an exercise went wrong. Protesters claimed the bombs were hazardous to the Great Barrier Reef. The Australian government initially said the bombs were no threat, and would remain where they were. But public pressure saw the US Navy retrieve the bombs. To reflect its bilateral nature, the leadership of the exercise switches between Australia and the US every two years. The exercise focuses on crisis action planning and contingency response, enhancing both nations' military capabilities to deal with regional contingencies and the war on terrorism. The exercise is historically held in odd-numbered years starting from 2005, with the ninth iteration taking place in 2021. Talisman Sabre 2005 was the inaugural exercise in this series, conducted 12-27 June 2005, in Shoalwater Bay, the Captain, Townsville, and the Coral Sea, with 16,000 US and Australian troops. Planning for the exercises began in early 2003, and the exercise was meant to combine elements from previous exercises, tandem thrust, kingfisher, and crocodile. During the exercise, US Pacific Command and Australian Defence Force Joint Operations Command jointly executed more than 25 landing craft, air cushion troops, and more than 1,300 Australian S-78 Blackhawk and MH-60s Nighthawk landings and takeoffs. Talisman Sabre 2021 was conducted in July 2021. The exercise was modified in scope and scale, with added health protection measures due to COVID-19 considerations. More than 17,000 personnel from Australia and the United States and forces from Canada, Japan, New Zealand, the Republic of Korea, and the United Kingdom, or the Australia-based personnel from India, Indonesia, France, and Germany, observed the exercise. Additionally, MIM-104 Patriot systems were tested in the exercise for the first time. For what was believed to be also the first time, the Chinese Navy deployed two Type 815 spy ships to observe the exercise. The Tianwing Sing and her younger sister the Heiwing Sing, Neptune, Talisman Sabre 2019, began in July 2019, with more than 34,000 personnel participating from 18 countries, including Australia, United States, Canada, Japan, and New Zealand. The exercise was officially launched on 8 July 2019, on board USS Ronald Reagan. Once again, the Chinese Navy sent a Type 815G Dongdiao-class ship, the Tianwing Xing, Uranus, to monitor the exercise, and there was speculation that China had a keen interest in how Japan's vessels interacted with and operated alongside the Andorran Franks and the US forces. The F-35B also made its debut in Australia during the exercise aboard USS Wasp. It was also the first time that both Canberra-class LHDs, HMAS Canberra and HMAS Adelaide, had operated together. Talisman Sabre 2017 began in June 2017 and involved more than 33,000 Australian and US troops. So um, I'm the beach master of the uh, amphibious beach team. Um, I work with all the landing craft that the Navy and Army have uh, to enable the unload of the PCS and also uh, Chules and Canterbury onto the beach. It's definitely a great training exercise. It's been um, great to work with the Navy and also um, it's exciting to be part of uh, the upcoming amphibious capability that the Australian Army has and working with the amphibious ready group. Uh, we um, marshal and manage the beach uh, to reduce congestion and enable a smooth uh, onload of uh, the tools and Canberra. 
Uh, this is quite an important job because uh, it is a natural choke point where we work. However, um, the guys I have with, we've been working for two years about together and uh, they're definitely capable in what they do. Um, so as part of Exercise Talisman Sabre, it is definitely a great opportunity to work with uh, the Navy on HMS Canberra, Jules, and also HMS NZ Canterbury. Um, it's definitely a very exciting time with uh, Australia's amphibious capability uh, getting larger and it's definitely, I'm quite honoured to be a part of it. So our first part of Talisman Sabre has been a beach landing to secure the beach for the ABT to conduct their works. That has seen our platoon land 700 metres north of the landing, move south and we've cleared this area for the ABT to then conduct their works. So first uh, we were located on the Canberra, HMAS Canberra. We cross deck to HMAS Chules before we loaded on the LCM-8, got to a small craft release point where we loaded on the Zodiacs to the beach itself. So our, our exercise scenario today has been an enemy located at the beach where we have to clear a position before securing the beach to allow the amphibious beach team to conduct their works. Without our security force securing the beach, the ABT will be unable to land the rest of the company to continue with the clearance or follow on forces. Look, I've just come from HMAS Canberra where this morning I observed the, the launch of the LLCs which brought the first of the beach teams in. Um, I've just jumped on board an MRH, one of four, that came in and did a, uh, a troop insertion further in field as well. So there's a lot of activity on board. It's just a precursor to the D-Day landings. And this is essential for us to be able to certify uh, the Amphibious Ready group. Uh, we're doing well so far. There's a great mix of people on board the ship, uh, both Army, Navy and Air Force working together. Uh, but we're proving the concepts and we're proving our ability to put all of this into practice. And well, the great thing is uh, HMNZS Canterbury is just off the coast here as well, working with both our Kiwis but also with our American allies. You can see that we, we uh, are able to put our own practice alongside those of the other nations and prove the interoperability which is essential in an operation like this. It's, uh, it's, it's an honour for me to be a part of uh, the, the, the team here with Australia in the First Division. Uh, you know, here working with you all, this is a great, uh, it's a massive exercise, it's the biggest exercise that uh, the Australian Defence Force runs. You know, every two years, this is the seventh iteration, and so a tremendous opportunity for the United States to, to work with our Australian uh, allies and partners. Uh, it's extremely important because of the, uh, the region that we operate in and the stability of the region. Our alliance and partnership is extremely important. So what we do out here, working together, learning from one another, is extremely important for the alliance and the security and stability of the region. Yeah, th this is a phenomenal exercise. This, personally, this is the, the, probably the biggest exercise that I've been involved with. Um, I've seen airdrops before, so we just got for, uh, you know, done uh, participating in a strategic airdrop. But this amphibious uh, landing, this amphibious assault, uh, is one that I haven't experienced in, in many years. So doing this all together as part of the larger umbrella of Talisman Sabre uh, and the way these things have been sequenced in here, I, I, it's a great demonstration of how we operate as uh, coalition partners and also from a joint perspective. So you're looking at all services and then operating in all the domains. So this has come together. Fantastic. The weather's worked out great for the airdrop and for the amphibious landing. I'm excited to see how this thing uh, works out with the, with, the, with the Marine Corps and the other uh, coalition partners out here. Uh, absolutely. I, lo I love Australia. I got to come out here on vacation uh, about six months ago. And it's a phenomenal opportunity to come out here and train. I know the troops uh, love it. You guys are phenomenal partners and allies. Uh, and I've always enjoyed working there. The last 17 years, every time I've showed up in a theater of operations, you guys have been there. Uh, and I appreciate it. So it's a great opportunity to continue to work with you all. The, what's occurring here is part of a much larger activity both in the land force environment and in the amphibious activity around it. Uh, but this morning in particular we are having a hit out for the first time of an ANZAC amphibious ready group. So you'll see there's three ships behind us at the moment, uh, the Chules, the Canberra and the Canterbury, the New Zealand amphibious unit and what we're about to observe is what is called a combined force entry operation where as a part of a sequence of activities and this is just one of those elements in the sequence we'll see an amphibious unit with its capabilities uh, push ashore and land the land force. So why is that? Uh, it is we live on an island and in a maritime environment so the nature of work the ADF performs uh, whether it's a humanitarian assistance activity and 2016 in Fiji was a demonstration of why an amphibious capability provides 
a really important uh, a, a, a important capability for us to add to the region by projecting force to, in that case, support uh, other people in distress and who need our help, all the way through the conduct of combat operations where the government requires us to do so. so uh, amphibious capabilities are inherently flexible uh, from peacetime roles to wartime roles, and that's why we need it and why we practice it. it uh, it's the scale that Talisman Sabre is important that brings uh, particular complexity for it. So having US forces, New Zealand forces here with us brings a size and a mass that we can't replicate at any other time. Size is complex to organise and construct and move. Uh, so we learn a lot from doing so. And in the development of our own national capability, uh, we build and grow by adding to the layers and size that we work with. So this has been on our pathway for introducing the amphibious force for a while and it's a really important